p.m. It's April, uh, I'm sorry, April 24th, and uh, this is the meeting of the Wilmington Board of Selectmen. Uh, all selectmen are present, uh, including uh, our newly elected Ed Loud. I'd like to congr congratulate you and welcome you to the board. And I'd also <laughs> also like to congratulate Mr. McCoy on being re-elected to the board. Thank you, Mr. McCoy. I look forward to working with you both. Uh, if I could ask everyone to please stand and we'll pledge allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, we do have uh, treasury warrants to approve, 42, 42A, 43, and 43A. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is the discussion? Um, is there any, any additional discussion? All in favor? We have four in favor and one abstain. Uh, Mr. Loud abstained uh, for having not been a part of those. Um, uh, no minutes to approve here. Uh, our first appointment this evening was an executive session, which we paused uh, at 7 o'clock in order to come out and join you. We will uh, reconvene into that executive session at the conclusion of this night, uh, at tonight's meeting. Uh, I also wanted to just take a brief moment to recognize that uh, everyone here on the board tonight, uh, as well as uh, Beverly Dalton, uh, are wearing an item of blue uh, in recognition of the fact that uh, April is Autism Awareness Month, and so it was brought to our attention several years ago by one of our former selectmen, uh, and we have continued that tradition. Uh, hopefully, folks throughout the, the month of August will pause uh, at least a few moments to give some consideration to uh, the, uh, the affliction of autism and how it affects individuals within our community. So uh, I thank you all for doing so. Um, our 7 o'clock appointment is with our very uh, wonderful uh, young folks that are joining us here tonight. We're very privileged and honored to have you here with us tonight. Uh, I want to, uh, I guess, call out the coaches here uh, and ask, who's the head coach? Trisha? Oh, OK. <laughs> here's, here's the names I have. I have Trisha, Peter, uh, uh, Matthew uh, Savage, and, uh, and Carrie White. So uh, Peter, I think, yes? Uh, I, I, if you don't mind, Peter, if you want to stand up and just sort of tell us a little bit about your run through the, uh, through the, the, the season and how you got to here tonight. Uh, well, first, uh, well, we're talking about the stage, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we did win our league, too, so oh, I just want to say We had our, um, the preliminary round back in January. Um, we played uh, Melrose, who who actually won it all last year. Uh, we ended up with uh, help from Macy Savage and Lily McKenzie, um, beat them to nothing. So that got us into the, uh, into the States. Mm -hmm. And once we got there, we ended up playing, um, first game was against Charlestown, thank you. Um, who we ended up losing to, but it was, uh, it was a game that went into overtime, then into two or three rounds of shootout. 11. Yeah, 11, 11, 11 uh, shooters, shootout. Shoot that one? Mike, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, man. <laughs> Thanks for helping me out. Um, after that was Andover, who we soundly beat 6 nothing. Um, then, then things got interesting. We played Weymouth. That was an overtime game. Mm. Um, two, two to, two to one. Yeah. yeah. I have to have the I have to have the young kids help me remember because uh, I'm getting a little old here. Um, then was Arlington, Arlington, which was another overtime game. Uh, two to one. Thanks, Sam. And then uh, the final that put us in the finals against Weymouth, Duxbury. Dang, Duxbury. I should, I should have warned you we were going to ask you this. Yeah, I got it. I got it. I definitely remember. Um, and that one, actually, we, we won in regulation time, which is sort of anticlimactic to, to all the other games. But um, yeah, we won two to one in that game. And uh, here we are. It's awesome. It's awesome. So just by frame, very, yeah, I'll go with you.
to give it context, it's the girls uh, U10, under 10 state uh, champions is who was before us tonight. I think Correct. I neglected to say that at the beginning. So what a tremendous accomplishment. Um, what I want to do, if it's okay, is uh, offer the opportunity for members of the board here to chat you up a little bit here. And if it's uh, all right with the board, I'd like to start with Mr. Bendel to the right. Thank you, Mr. Shampoo, and congratulations to everybody here. Girls, congratulations. I want to uh, congratulate you first and foremost. A terrific accomplishment. I also want to congratulate the coaches. Um, as a coach myself, I know the time that goes into you guys put in early, mo much earlier morning than in a basketball world. Uh, I'm, I have to admit I'm not a hockey guy, but uh, I really respect what you guys do. And obviously the parents uh, invest a lot of time and money and effort and energy to, uh, to support you guys. And, and you guys didn't let them down. It's a terrific uh, accomplishment. It's my understanding that uh, it was an overtime championship game. Is that correct? No. Going into the three, so a couple, three out of the five. Okay, it was quite a few, and uh, I heard you had uh, quite a uh, fantastic finish. And and, uh, and some one parent or uh, told me that the uh, the goalie stood on their head. Is that the term right? Did I use that correctly? Uh, I believe Miss Sonato did a terrific job, and so uh, I congratulate you all. And then as a father of a young girl, when you guys get to high school, hopefully my daughter will be looking up to you guys when you're playing at the high school level and beyond. So I wish you the best of luck. Congratulations uh, to all of you. Thank you. Right. Very nice. I just want to echo my colleagues' uh, comments. Congratulations. There's so much enthusiasm here. I mean, I see it in your pictures. It's unbelievable. Congratulations on what you did and how you represented the town of Wilmington. Uh, we're very proud of you and all of your accomplishments. And uh, thank you to your parents, right? Every, every night you say thank you to them before you head off to bed. Yeah, yeah I say you do that. And uh, uh, to the coaches, uh, all the time and effort and the, that they put into it to uh, help you. And uh, everybody drives you back and forth. And I hope you really appreciate that. And as you move up, and hopefully we'll see you at that high school level playing hockey up there as well. But just a great accomplishment. Congratulations. Keep up the good work. Okay. <laughs> we'll go right down the line. Mr. McCoy? You know, I know it's all been said. You know, a lot of times you hear a lot of bad that young kids do, but I'm looking out here, there's a lot of good in this room, and so it's really, you're putting a wonderful mark here in the town of Wilmington. You girls did fantastic. And the coaches, you know, don't forget your mom and dad. They're always getting up, taking you out there. My kids are a little bit older than Mr. Bendel's, so, but I understand where it is. And at the last meeting, we had a lot of young men, and I remember Slockman Moon Connell here, she stated, we have a bunch of good looking, handsome young men. Well, I'm gonna say, fairness to you girls, we have a lot of pretty young ladies here, <laughs> all right? So, in fairness to everybody, but once again, you make the town proud and your parents and you guys are fantastic. And if you win it down the road, if you get a little old, you win a championship. I've been on board a couple years and when the high school won, they colored the hair blonde. We came out wearing blonde wigs. So, <laughs> if you guys decide to put some color in your hair, I'll put a pink wig on for you guys, all right? <laughs> okay, thanks. All right, congratulations. Wow. Everything has been said, but I, I do want to say one thing. I was a youth hockey player back in the day, and I don't think I could skate before I was 10 years old. So you girls are doing 10 times better than most of us out there. So thank you for representing Wilmington and the great job you did. It's been said, but don't forget your parents and your coaches. I'm, I'm sure glad you girls had fun playing. I hope you did, because it's fun out there watching you guys play. Thank you. I'll, uh, I'll take it from here. Um, I'd be remiss if I didn't acknowledge uh, our former chairperson, Judy O'Connell, is in the room here. <laughs> Judy has a vested interest in the team's success, and uh, I'm sure she, she enjoys this uh, as much as all the parents and, and the coaches as well. I want to, uh, uh, above and beyond saying congratulations to you ladies and coaches, I want to say thank you. You're thanking us for the words we're saying, but I want to thank you for really representing Wilmington. As you went out and played all these towns that, that your coach just told us about, um, you represented the town of Wilmington as you went into all those communities, and you represented us very, very well. So those towns now view us and they judge Wilmington in a very positive light. They think good things about us because of the good things they saw in you. So I thank you for being ambassadors to, of the town of Wilmington to the rest of our communities. And congratulations. I have a strange feeling, like I said to the boys a couple weeks ago, we're going to see you ladies in here again in a couple years. Uh, and I'm looking forward to that time. So congratulations. Um, we have, you're welcome.
So we have some certificates. I'm going to come out in front here, and Mr. Uh, Mr. Hull is going to read off the names, and uh, we'll hand them to you. And as, you, as we read off your name, come up. I'll shake your hand, and then take your certificate, and then I go, go off, and we'll create a line, I guess, in front of the, the wall here, okay? Good. Uh, the first certificate uh, goes to Juliana Angioni. Samantha Crowley. Uh, Antonia Di Foglia. Uh, uh, Emma Ebert. Corrine Foley. Alexis Fox. Shay Gould. Casey Kelly. Julia Lambert. Alexandra uh, Levine. <laughs> Lily, Lily McKenzie. <laughs> Ashley Mercier. <laughs> Libby Mozick. Megan Malarkey. Uh, Madeline Senato. Macy Savage. Vivian Savoy. Gianna Young. And now for the coaches, Trisha Lambert. Peter Malarkey. Matthew Savage. and Kerry White.
I don't know about you gentlemen, but that's the way to start a meeting. That's fun stuff. That's good. <laughs> that is good stuff. <laughs> I like the way you roll. Um, all right, our 715 scheduled appointment, just a few moments. We did our, we're doing all right on time here. Is with David Carr, Esquire, uh, regarding a public hearing to request the transfer of the all alcohol license of Mystic Liquors Incorporated doing business as Wilmington Plaza Wine and Spirits to NR, Wilmington Corporation doing business as Wilmington Plaza Wine and Spirits, 258 Main Street in Wilmington. Uh, do I have Mr. Carr present? David Carr. Mr. Yeah. Carr, how are you, sir? Chairman, thank you. Very well. It's a difficult act to follow. <laughs> We'd like a chance, if you don't mind. Yes. Uh, as mentioned, I represent NR Wilmington Corporation. They seek your approval in a uh, license transfer of an existing liquor store, all package store, uh, located at uh, two 58 Main Street in uh, Wilmington, right next door to uh, the Market Basket. It's been uh, in existence for quite a number of years. My clients to my right, this is uh, or to the far right, Rocky Patel and Nilesh Patel have over 17 combined years of, of business in the package store business. They have uh, three liquor stores that they currently own and operate in some fashion, Wakefield and Stoneham. Uh, we're seeking your approval so that we can get to the next stage with the ABCC and get their approval uh, following yours, hopefully, this evening. Uh, obviously, if you have questions and concerns, but earlier I submitted to your assistant, Beverly Dalton, this evening, the proof of service to all of the abutters, some 21 or 22 uh, abutting neighbors that have been notified of tonight's hearing. Thank you. Uh, it, this is a public hearing, uh, so actually I'll go to the board here and uh, uh, offer up the opportunity for any of our board members to ask any questions they may have. Mr. Loud, I'll start at your side if that's okay. Um, I read the packet uh, last night and then again this afternoon and uh, really don't have any questions. Everything seems to be in order, sir. Do we have any recommendations from the uh, town manager relative to the chief or anything? Um, yeah, well, yeah, now's as good a time as any, sure. Uh, yes, we have a recommendation from the Police Chief Michael Bogonis. Upon review, the Wilmington Police Department recommends approval of NR Wilmington Corporation's application for transfer of license. Uh, NR Wilmington Corporation, Nalish Patel, President, Kalish Patel, Treasurer, 229 Main Street, Wilmington, Mass. Thank you, Mr. From the town manager, I feel a lot of confidence from the chief. and the town board, so I have no issue uh, granting the license. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Uh, Chairman, uh, I would uh, also just note for the record that uh, in addition to that recommendation, uh, the building inspector, uh, Al Spaulding, indicates I have reviewed the above mentioned application, have no outstanding zoning issues. And then uh, Shelley Newhouse, the health director, uh, notes I recommend approval of the application of NR Wilmington Corporation, DBA Wilmington Plaza Wine and Spirit for transfer of the alcohol package store license of Mystic Liquors, DBA Wilmington Plaza Wine and Spirit to NR Wilmington Corporation, DBA Wilmington Plaza Wine and Spirit. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Kyra. Mr. Ben. Uh, gentlemen, thanks for being here. Everything seems to be in order. Uh, I'm in favor of this request. I just have one question. Uh, can the residents in town expect anything different from you? It's just gonna be new ownership, same uh, offering. The good, good prices. Thank you. My question was very much the same as Mr. Louds. Will will you will either of you gentlemen be on site and present during operations, or you are? Okay. Um, very well. Um, so it is an open. I'm sorry. Do you have something? I was just going to add that uh, in the event that the board is so inclined to uh, make a motion to uh, accept. Uh, to authorize this license that the motion also uh, include language uh, uh, that uh, this uh, issuance of the alcohol license is not detrimental to the educational activities of the Learning Center, which is at 220R Main Street uh, as part of the uh, authorization. 220R? Yes. 
sorry. Uh, so it, yeah, please. Question. Um, I was about to say the same. Yes. Uh, they, they're going to be from uh, 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. Uh, Monday through Saturday, Sunday, 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. Is that yes. changing what's currently there now? Yes. It's 10 o'clock closing right now. That's his understanding, so it would be an extended hour. Thank you. It, it is a public hearing, so I'll offer the opportunity for anyone, uh, residents or else present, that would like to offer a question or comment. I see none, so I'll close the public hearing at this time and uh, ask for a motion, if there's one to be made. Move to grant the request. Um, would would you grant the request with the language uh, that the request is not uh, that the uh, permit is not detrimental to the learning center at 220R Main? Sure, as described by the manager. Very well. That's a motion made Second. and seconded. Uh, all in favor? It's unanimous. Gentlemen, thank you for coming and good thank luck you. to you. Thank thank you. you Welcome to much. Wilmington. Thank you. Our 725 scheduled appointment is with Colin M. Cush Cushman uh, of Sweet Pizza LLC doing business as Su uh, Sweet Pizza. We have a request to obtain a common victualers license for property located at 206 Ballardville Street, Suite 4. I believe I have Mr. Cushman in front. That would be me. How are you, sir? How are you doing, guys? Welcome. Uh, if you want to just summarize, uh, we have uh, the request in front of us, but you're here. So, so. Sweet Pizza has been open for almost two years now on Ballardville Street, and uh, I opened it with my partner and he, he uh, ended up selling it to me so it's just you know transfer of the common VIX license it's gonna be the same business as it was just into transfer of the I have a created a new LLC and it just transferring the the VIX license that's it thank you mr. Cushman um, Jeff uh, do you want to highlight any uh, recommendations yes uh, we have a recommendation uh, from Shelley Newhouse the health director uh, I recommend approval of the application for a common victualers license submitted by uh, Colin Cushman, Sweet Pizza, LLC, DBA, Sweet Pizza, located at 206 Ballad Vale Street. I believe you have the wrong LLC. Um, the, the Sweet Pizza LLC is the previous owner. I created a new LLC. LLC is Wilmington Sweet Pizza LLC. Okay. Which, that, that's how it reads on the application. It just didn't, uh, didn't make it. Uh, and then the uh, uh, inspector of buildings also recommends after review and consideration of the town of Wilmington bylaws and all applicable codes, I have no outstanding zoning issues with the above mentioned business. Very well, thank you. Um, any questions from the board? Uh, Greg, I'll start. Good luck. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, good luck. I have the same Mr. McCoy. I'm just wondering, is it Italian style or uh, pan pizza? Because I've had a few kind pizzas of a, in my yeah, lifetime. A, a beach pizza, if you've heard. Like, it's okay. not really, it's thin well, crust, it's great. not really Sicilian, but it's, it's a thin oh. square pizza. If you haven't tried it, come by. It's very good. You've tried it, it's good stuff. Yeah, it is. Yeah, my daughter got it, she loved it. Thank you, thank you. Mr. Lowe? I'm all set. Nothing. Uh, that being said, uh, I would uh, accept, uh, I have no questions either. Um, with uh, the recommendations here, I have no reason to, uh, to stand in the way. Uh, I would accept a motion. Make a motion that we uh, grant the request. Second. Motion is made and seconded. Uh, all in favor? Mr. Cushman, good luck to you, sir. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Yes. Have a good one. You as well. So our 7:30 scheduled appointment. Uh, we're just slightly ahead of schedule, but it's not a uh, it's not a visit. Uh, so we'll jump right to it. Uh, is uh, with really uh, speaking with Jeff Hall, our town manager, uh, and have hi give him the opportunity to uh, reveal to us the approach, uh, his approach, the town's approach to the provision for uh, a substance abuse service provider. Uh, so Jeff, I'll hand it off to you. Uh, thank you. Uh, just by way of background, uh, you may recall that uh, we first uh, began discussions, and by we I mean uh, 
uh, the chief of police, uh, the health director, uh, some internal staff, uh, as well as discussions happening with members of the Substance Abuse Coalition uh, about 18 months ago, uh, 18 to 24 months ago, about the prospect of uh, looking for resources uh, to address, uh, unfortunately, what is an ongoing problem in Wilmington as it is everywhere else, and that is uh, substance abuse. And uh, the, a after those discussions, uh, there were some individual discussions that the police chief and the uh, health director had with a uh, representative from a behavioral health uh, entity in the area about the prospect of providing uh, services, and there seemed to be some uh, interest at that level. Uh, based upon that, in the fiscal 17 budget, uh, I recommended $80,000 uh, be appropriated uh, for the purpose of uh, issuing a request for proposal and engaging uh, with a behavioral health uh, company uh, to provide those services. Uh, the uh, RFP was issued uh, at the end of February. Uh, proposals were due at the end of March. Unfortunately, uh, we did not receive any proposals and in, as you recall at the last meeting, uh, the board was uh, looking for uh, the direction from here. Uh, we did meet internally uh, and had some discussions with uh, a number of people, including the uh, behavioral health uh, outfit that had early on expressed interest. As it turns out, uh, apparently part of the reason that they were not uh, able to submit a proposal was uh, staffing issues. They weren't able to deploy uh, someone uh, to Wilmington uh, we also uh, had uh, communications with uh, the representative from the uh, school department, uh, Alice Brown Legrand, who, as you may know, is the uh, coordinator of behavioral health with the school department, and uh, communicated with her about the RFP uh, and what we were seeking. She offered some uh, advice in terms of the approach and suggested that the uh, uh, in terms of qualifications, uh, the types of people that we were looking for uh, were probably not likely to be available um, through a uh, consulting arrangement. Uh, so based upon uh, this information, uh, it, uh, uh, at this point I'm recommending that we take the approach of hiring uh, an individual on a full-time basis uh, to uh, engage in uh, this effort of assisting uh, both uh, the victims of substance abuse as well as uh, the families, uh, as was discussed previously. Uh, the uh, scope of work, the job description, would really be uh, multifaceted. First, uh, in part, working with the police department and uh, accompanying uh, officers uh, when they uh, go to a household or a location where someone is uh, struggling with substance abuse, uh, working with both the, the victims and their families to identify resources uh, that might be available uh, in uh, making sure that they're able to get those resources and then also following up uh, with them at, later, at a later point in time. So this individual would not be uh, treating these individuals. It wouldn't be a doctor-patient relationship, if you will, but they would uh, be uh, working with uh, the families and the uh, individuals to uh, get them the resources that they need to try to um, ad address those issues. So uh, in terms of uh, the timeline, uh, we are looking uh, to uh, finalize the job description by the end of the week. Uh, also, we'll be having uh, conversations with um, or receiving information from other communities that have uh, done this. In fact, uh, uh, D. Casey has obtained uh, job descriptions from other communities uh, already, and so we're going through those now. But we expect to finalize the job description by the end of the week. Uh, we would be uh, looking to uh, begin the advertising uh, the week of uh, May 1st, uh, select and interview candidates uh, based upon uh, 
criteria that we set up uh, through by the uh, uh, week of May 22nd. Um, and then uh, uh, essentially be looking to uh, bring someone on board uh, by the end of June. We expect that by the time we go through the interview process, uh, maybe even second interviews, uh, it's likely that the individual that is hired is going to have to provide notice to their existing employer. So uh, we would expect that um, by the end of uh, June or beginning of July, we would have someone uh, in place. Thank you, Jeff. Um, yeah, as at our last meeting, I think it was uh, the the common theme or the common thread from uh, those of us that were at this on, on the board at the time uh, that we wanted to continue to uh, attach a high level of priority to this effort, uh, and um, I can see that uh, that has been the intent uh, here with your sequence of events. Um, I guess. I'm satisfied personally. I, I feel satisfied with the with the schedule. Um, if I may, at the same time, I say that I'm satisfied. I'm frustrated that it doesn't move faster. But I don't I don't offer that as a as a gotcha or anything. It's just that this that's the way that the process has to go. Um, but I'm emboldened or, or uh, made to, to feel uh, more encouraged that that we are at a point finally where we are taking some positive uh, action steps forward. So. Uh, it's good news in my regard. I want to make sure everyone has an opportunity to ask questions or offer commentary, and so I don't want to necessarily start anywhere. So, yeah, Mr. McCoy, please. Mr. Chairman, Jeff, I just want to ask a couple of quick questions. I know we talked about it, and I'm glad that you went through the process. And I've got a couple of questions. Are there other communities that abut Wilmington that has a full-time person that works that the position that you're looking to uh, propose? Uh, there are communities that have uh, part-time individuals um, <laughs> I know Bill Ricca, for example, is part-time. Uh, Tewksbury, I believe, is uh, they share an individual with other communities. Uh, Reading, uh, they do have, uh, it's actually not an employee of the town, as I understand it. They have a separate uh, entity that uh, uh, hires an individual. And uh, I am not sure about North Reading. All right, you know, the reason why I say, I'll be honest, sir. Uh, you know, I said it last time, I wouldn't have an issue having a regional person. I don't know, do we actually really need a full-time person on staff to handle this? I mean, I know it's an epidemic and I know we have to do our best, but, you know, I just, I don't know, a full-time employ employer, you know, uh, an employee, I, we can't look at working it with other communities, maybe hiring one individual, because I know we got to, we talked about it last week, you're going to have to pay health insurance, you're going to have to pay all kinds of benefits, and I'm sure you're going to have to pay some something substantial. And uh, we... Couldn't we look before we hire this individual if there's opportunity that maybe a regional individual, you know, a couple of towns? I mean, I just put that out there, you know? Well, I think the uh, one of the challenges with hiring someone uh, regionally, and obviously it depends upon the number of communities you're dealing with, but uh, that means we're only getting that individual for, uh, you know, a part time basis. Uh, you know, I think uh, there are enough cases, uh, and the chief can certainly speak to the numbers, uh, but the, uh, the fact that we have, you know, there, there are individuals out there that, that the police department knows of, and I should point out that this isn't just an issue that the police department uh, deals with. This is, these uh, instances uh, are uh, come before the veterans agent as well as elderly services. So uh, in my estimation, um, a part-time a uh, person working part-time is not going to be able to uh, address the demand for services. Just one. If we could get the chief, I'm just wondering about statistically, say per year, how many times is this an issue where, you know, just to justify, you know, hiring somebody full-time. That's all. Well, thank you, Mr. McCoy. That's a, that's a good thank question. You. Thank you to the board for allowing me to speak tonight. Uh, when we looked at that uh, regional, regional approach, we saw that other communities had a regional approach. It was kind of a cursory top layer style where they would come in, they would set up a shingle one day a week, have individuals come to them. Um, this is a whole different model. We're looking to be proactive. We're looking to be grassroots, looking to hit the streets. When we get information that there's a family that has an individual struggling to reach out to them. This isn't just for the individual that's addicted. It's for the family as well. 
if anybody's ever known anybody that uh, lives in a family or in a household where there's a, a substance abuse problem with one of their beloved ones, um, they, they, they realize quickly that it's a health problem for the entire family. And there's a lot of, I guess, uh, mystery about the whole process. And part of this plan would be to educate the people better, the families better, so they had more information that they could be there at that tipping point, at the time that's critical to get the assistance that the individual needs. Now, the average person that's in recovery sits in recovery for about 10 years, probably goes to three major rehabs. That's a very frustrating 10 years for a family who really doesn't know what to do. So our plan here was to integrate a substance abuse counselor and a family counselor to the system to go out there and assist with the family. So we wouldn't just, for every case, it wouldn't just be one individual we would be talking to, trying to get assistance to. It would be the entire family. So if that's a family of five, then there's five people that that individual would be trying to help to make the proper referrals. Um, right now, the model kind of exists already in the school system. They have counselors in the school system, but they focus on the children. We've seen a lot uh, over the years where there's elderly that are raising their grandchildren because their son or daughter is in addiction. Um, and there's a lot of stress that goes with that for those folks. They're on fixed incomes. There's a lot that they don't understand, a lot of things that they, they have trouble navigating through. And the stress level is really, really heavy for them, um, as you can understand in that situation. Your, your later stages in life and you think you're going to be retiring. Now you're taking care of uh, some young grandchildren and uh, trying to struggle to get your, your child the help that they need. So this is, uh, this is a bigger program than that. It always was. It wasn't something that was just you know, to go out and make a quick referral. This is a follow-up process. This is a relationship process um, for every uh, department head in the community that experiences this type of situation. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So it's a bigger picture. The family's involved, I can understand. So, all right, mother, father, children. So I, you know, I know it's an issue. I just was wondering to get a better feel on that. That's all. All right, thank you, Chair. I might add, this is unique. No other community is doing what we plan to do. Yeah. And I believe it's going to have a lot of success. I've spent a lot of time over the years sitting with families that struggle through this process and trying to help them. And knowing that I'm limited with the information that I can give them and the assistance that I can give them, I think that this gives us the opportunity to respond in conjunction with them, um, resolve any safety issues that exist, and then do the pass off so that the counselor can get them directed to the places they need to I'm go. Glad you explained. Yeah. Bottom line, you're the top cop, and if that's what you're saying, I have no issue with it. I just wanted to understand a little bit more. So, you know, it's actually a reach out within the family, and you know, and the family has friends and cousins. And all right, it's something important. No, no. All right, thank you, Chief. Thank you. Thank you. Did you have a question, Mr. Lowe? Mr. Chairman, thank you, Chief, uh, for the explanation. Uh, so, Jeff, um, is $80,000 going to be something that we're going to target for a salary? Is it something less we're going to do? Has any research been done on a targeted salary for this uh, uh, employee? That is something that we are uh, finalizing now. We believe, based upon the information that uh, we've received from um, other uh, communities, uh, that the 80000 we have will be uh, adequate to cover uh, salaries. And I just want to commend the board for pushing this forward because it's a very important subject. So thank you. General? There's a light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, Mr. Carr, yeah? No, you, you said salaries are just the salary. Salary, so it will be just the one, just one, yep. Yeah. Mr. Benedict? All right, thank you. Just a couple of things. I appreciate this being on the agenda. I hope to see it on future agendas. Um, as I mentioned before, this is probably my top priority here as I volunteer. Um, I think it's worth noting this wasn't our first option, as it's noted here in the packet. We put a proposal out. We didn't get any responses, as you mentioned. So we're on to this. I appreciate the Chief's uh, proactive approach. A lot of people talk about trying to lift the stigma around addiction. This is one way that Wilmington can be in the forefront of doing that. Um, and I would most importantly point out that the taxpayers have already approved this money last year. Uh, and again, it's going to go before them next Saturday at town meeting for another appropriation. And so again, I think the money's already there. We obviously have identified that there's a need. I think this is a, a great approach and I'm prepared to support this. Thank you, Mr. Benno. My, an observation that I have, and correct me if, you, if I'm off base on this, I kind of feel like uh, this role, once it takes shape, will be uh, like what Lou Samaglia does as a veterans agent, but for the civilian population. I, I know Lou is able to work with a number of the veterans who are struggling with uh, addiction. Uh, or challenges or family situations, and he's working with that, uh, that portion of the population exclusively by virtue of the fact they're veterans, but there's so many folks that aren't veterans that still need those kind of support services that 
in the current model, just don't have a, a, a resource. And so I, I think this resource will sort of fill that gap. Is that a reasonable, uh, I guess, assessment of the situation? Absolutely. That's our hope. That's our hope. We, we, our hope is to um, establish this program. Um, I expect it'll have a, a great amount of success, and it could become models for the communities going forward. It's a more holistic approach to the process. Um, stable environments is a huge key to being able to beat addiction. Um, having that ability to, you know, come home to an environment that, that is safe and secure, and, and information is the key. Um, if you've ever tried to go on a website like SAMHSA and try to look up information to give to your children or whatever, you can just get completely lost in that process. There's so much information out there, it's hard to pick and choose what works and what doesn't work. But at the end of the day, that still doesn't give that ability for um, a resource um, to make a referral for a more one-on-one -on -one um, clinical approach so that that individual can get the specific help that they need, however they're going through it. They show that in a lot of uh, uh, statistics, uh, children that are uh, exposed to childhood trauma, um, and specifically the trauma of seeing an older sibling involved or engaged in substance abuse, uh, have a higher propensity to become substance abusers themselves. And we're looking to be able to stop that gap or at least slow it uh, as much as we possibly can by getting the resources in early on that. And I think that as the program grows, more and more people will have comfort with it because they'll understand where we're coming from, what we're trying to do. This isn't about putting handcuffs on people. It's about stemming the tide of this epidemic that uh, is only growing, folks. You know, when we can see a reduction in numbers, most of the communities are seeing an increase. So this is already kind of what we're doing, but we're doing it as lay laypersons, uh, as police officers. So I think a clinician, somebody that has a better understanding of it, better ability to attain resources, uh, is the right way to go. So I, I thank you for your support. But this discussion is healthy. I'm realizing, you know, I'm more in favor of it. I didn't realize at the moment there, like Lou Samago, who does a great job, veterans, and you're right, I'm glad you mentioned that because having this discussion, it just makes me more to want to support this. And I'll say, now that you said it, I had a story. I had a kid that worked for me at the restaurant. His name was Eric, lives in Tewksbury. Come back from Iraq, maybe you know who he is. He turned to drugs and that was it. I gave Lou a call, I said, geez, anything you can do, the kids in Tewksbury, Lou took care of them, Lou did a great job. And this discussion is healthy. I didn't really, I missed the boat on that and I apologize. And that, I'm all for it, I'm all for it. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, the chief pointed out the numbers have reduced and I think the chief may agree and I don't wanna speak for you, but the numbers only identify those who are less fortunate and perhaps didn't survive. That doesn't take into account those who are battling addiction currently. Um, and so I think we can all agree that even one tragedy is more than enough to, to make us want to uh, get some energy behind this. I do have a question, uh, Mr. Man uh, for the manager, if it's appropriate, through the chairman, that perhaps we could be uh, provided a copy of the job description at our next meeting. It says here you'll have it done by the end of this week, so our next meeting, I believe, is May 8th. If we could get a copy of the description and perhaps we could get an update on this bi-weekly as we come uh, to our meetings. Get packets every, every weekend, sure. everywhere. Anyway, so whatever. Yes. As you're making progress, if you can just keep us surprised, yeah. that would be great. You know, it, it was it was occurring to me. You know, we're we're being a trailblazer in, in with this particular position, and sometimes in municipal uh, operations or government, I think, ah, oh, I don't know if I want to be a trailblazer because sometimes it's better. Let's let some, some other community make the mistakes and learn from them. Uh, and, and, you know, let's let them invent the wheel and then we can go and get the wheel and, and, and apply it ourselves. Um, but we're talking about human life and we don't have the time to wait here. So under your leadership uh, and your guidance and, and together with the people at, at Town Hall, um, I believe it's, this is the most appropriate time to be a trailblazer and I'm, I'm encouraged by it. Um, do you envision, I don't know who to direct this to, where would this individual work out of? In, in, from the public safety building or Town Hall or? The uh, public safety building. Okay, but not a, it's not going to be an officer position. Uh, no. It would be just no. someone that collaborates with you and your team. This kind of mirrors other models out there. There's a um, jail diversion program that began in Framingham. Um, Advocates was the uh, uh, social services company that took the contract on through the state at that point, and they have a lot of success with um, having a close relationship with the police department because that's when... You're first notified of crisis a lot of times is through a call for service to the police department. And, you know, when we get there, we're police officers. So, you know, you know I don't, I don't want to say that we're crude, but, you know, if you're a hammer, most everything looks like a nail. So in this situation, you want to come in and have the ability to 
stabilize the situation, and understand when that pass off is necessary to go to somebody with a social services background that can help that person or stay on and after it's stabilized and deal with the things that we would ordinarily go to our next call for service. So I think it just expands our ability to provide a better service in total to Wilmington. Um, with that, that model that it exists in other locations, this is just a deviation of that. Our thought is that without the entire family being healthy as they can, it's very difficult for the individual in crisis to be healthy. So we want to be able to provide that entire support and be more, uh, I guess, fluid with the referral process uh, up and down, whether it's through the schools or through social services someplace else. Uh, to, to assist as many people as we can. Mr. Chair, do you, do you need a motion for us to accept this as a new position? I think we're all in favor no. of it. This was just to, to provide the board with a, a status and a, essentially provide the board with a game plan. I, I, I appreciate the question, Kevin, because I was, I was going to go with, with the same. And, and uh, while a, a formal vote seems not to be necessary, it does seem that there's a, uh, an informal endorsement of the, of the, of the process here. So uh, I would say engage and go forward. And thank you for staying aggressive on it. Thank you, Chief. So our 745, uh, which is just slightly uh, behind schedule here, uh, is a, the discussion uh, and the assignments of motions for the annual town meeting, which is this coming Saturday. Um, so uh, just as a, by way of reminder, um, uh, it is with some regret, uh, only, only a small amount that is, uh, that I can't join you uh, this Saturday at town meeting. I will be celebrating my son's uh, confirmation in our church. Uh, so it's a big deal from, for he and for my family, and that's why I say it's only with some regret, because I'm very much looking forward to celebrating that event with him and my family. Um, but it does take me away from you, my second family. Uh, so uh, I'll leave it to Jeff to uh, sort of go through the process and, uh, and guide us to, as to who's going to be reading which motions. Uh, so the board received uh, in your packet a uh, memo uh, from me last uh, week that uh, outlined uh, the assignment of uh, motions subject to any changes that you would like to make. Uh, starting at the top, uh, we start with uh, our Article uh, 1 being uh, Greg, followed by uh, Article 2, the committee reports, uh, 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 Selectman Kyra, uh, and then uh, and these, uh, I would just uh, suggest, obviously, if the board wants to make changes, uh, so be it. Uh, Article 3 uh, would be Selectman McCoy. Uh, 4, uh, Selectman Loud. And then the Articles uh, 5, 5A, B, C, D uh, would be all uh, addressed by the uh, Chairperson of the Finance Committee. And then uh, back into Capital uh, would be Selectman Bendel. Uh, again, capital 6B would be Selectman Kyra. Uh, 6C capital would be uh, Selectman McCoy. Select, uh, 6D uh, would be Selectman Loud. Uh, 6E, uh, still on capital, would be Selectman Bendel. Uh, Selectman uh, Kyra would uh, be assigned uh, 6F, again, capital. 6G is capital, that would be uh, Selectman McCoy. Uh, 6H, Selectman Loud. 6I, uh, Selectman Bendel. Uh, 6J, we're still on capital, uh, would be Selectman Kyra. 6K would be Selectman McCoy. 6L, Selectman Loud. Uh, Article 7, uh, Technology, would be Selectman Bendel. Uh, Article 8, Selectman Kyra. Article 9, Selectman McCoy. Article 10, Selectman Loud. Article 11, Selectman Bendel. Article 12, Selectman Kyra. Article 13, Selectman McCoy, Article 14, Selectman Loud, Article 15, Selectman Bendel, Article 16, Selectman Kyra, Article 17, Selectman McCoy, uh, 18, Selectman Loud, 
uh, 19 Selectman Bendel, 20 Selectman Kyra, 21 Selectman McCoy, 22 Selectman Loud, 23 Selectman Bendel, and then Articles 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, and 29, and 30 would be a uh, representative from the school committee. Article 31, Selectman Kyra. <clears throat> Article 32, Selectman McCoy. 33, Selectman Loud. 34, Selectman Bendel. 35, Selectman Kyra. 36, Selectman McCoy. 37, Selectman Loud. 38, uh, Selectman Bendel, 39, Selectman Kyra, Article 40, Selectman McCoy, 41, Selectman Loud, 42, Selectman Bendel, uh, 43, Selectman Kyra, and Article 44 would be Selectman McCoy, uh, Article uh, 45, 46, 47, 48 and 49 uh, would be a representative from the planning board. And then article uh, 50 uh, would be Selectman Loud. Very well. Are those acceptable to everybody? Uh, no one has a good. Good. I wish you all well. So you don't need help Monday? Uh, Sunday, Saturday, Monday? <laughs> Chairman, I would just note, uh, we received notice um, late this afternoon uh, that Article 51, which is a petition article that was uh, submitted for the purposes of rezoning uh, 278 Lowell Street, which is the property next to uh, Burger King, that article has been withdrawn. Thank you. Article 50 uh, 51. 51. Thank you, sir. And that will be obviously indicated uh, pretty much at the beginning of the town meeting, I imagine, yes? Yes. Very well. Um, Eight o'clock scheduled appointment. Uh, we are a little ahead of schedule, but again, I think we can proceed uh, with uh, it not being involving a guest, uh, is the reorganization of the board. Um, so uh, because of the election um, and Ms. O'Connell uh, leaving us, um, I sit here tonight really just as a placeholder. Uh, it is now the opportunity for uh, members here to decide who will uh, will act as a guide, uh, working directly with uh, the manager uh, over the course of the next year, collaborating with uh, the individuals here. So um, I'll open it up for conversation. This is always kind of one of those kind of weird, weird, weird moments where there's no real uh, process for it. So I'll shut up and back off and let uh, let individuals chime in as they care to. Well, I'll, I guess I'll start. I'll. Uh I'll put forward the name of Mike Shampoo as the chairman of the Board of Selectmen. Um, prior chairman, uh, you're in that uh, seat right now. You might as well just stay right there and keep it. Uh, so I'll that. second that. It's a motion uh, for discussion. If I may, I'd echo my colleague's uh, comments. I think he's done a nice job in the past, proven to uh, do a nice job here so far tonight. I don't see why you shouldn't the rest of the year. Thank you, gentlemen. I'm humbled with uh, your your confidence in me. Um, any other conversations or motions to be made? I would echo the comments of the other two prior. And um, Well, I don't hear forward. any other motions. Uh, thank you all. I, uh, uh, it's not um, big shoes to fill. Uh, Ms. O'Connell was a, uh, a superior chairperson of this board, and uh, I'm humbled uh, with the opportunity to serve the people of Wilmington. Um, I only hope that uh, uh, in so doing, um, we can cultivate a, uh, an environment of collaboration amongst ourselves and with our fellow volunteers uh, throughout the community on various boards uh, and with our residents and, uh, and just try to keep it um, always moving forward and always moving positively uh, for, towards common goals. Uh, so I, I accept humbly uh, the, uh, the, the nomination and the, the second. So I guess that is a nomination and a second, uh, all in favor. Thank you. Thank you all. 
it's unanimous. So we don't have to move. That's the first time in a while we don't have activity at the table. Uh, thank you. Um, Jeff, if it's all right, we'll jump right over into communications, please. Uh, yes, the first item is uh, the memorandum that was provided to the board regarding substance abuse, which was uh, previously addressed. Uh, next is a correspondence from James DiLorenzo from uh, EPA. Uh, this was a correspondence that he provided uh, that relates to uh, Olin's response uh, to uh, EPA's uh, proposal to develop uh, alternatives uh, to begin to uh, look at addressing uh, remediation. Um, the EPA uh, proposed a d development of alternatives to address contaminants in operating units one, which is the Olin property itself, operating unit two, which is the off property sediment and surface water, and then a portion of operating unit three, which includes the so-called DAPL. Uh, Olin's uh, response to um, uh, EPA uh, is that they do not believe that there is enough information at this point to initiate a feasibility study. Uh, they believe, uh, they do not believe, mm -hmm. as does EPA, uh, that the DAPL uh, is a so-called principal threat waste, which is a term that is defined within the uh, EPA lexicon or regulations, uh, and they suggest that it, because it's not mobile, uh, there doesn't need to be, and this is my words, not theirs, but essentially they're, they don't believe that there's quite the level of urgency uh, that um, EPA um, is suggesting there is in terms of beginning to look at alternatives. Uh, Olin also believes that uh, de in developing remedial alternatives for the DAPL at this point in time uh, may undermine uh, other solutions that might be available for uh, the groundwater contamination. So there's Clearly, uh, a difference of opinion between Olin and EPA, and they were scheduled to meet today to uh, work through this. Uh, if you recall, I had mentioned at a prior meeting that uh, Olin exercised a, uh, a measure under the terms of their agreement with Olin uh, uh, for a further discussion on this point. So uh, I would expect in the next uh, week or so we'll be getting a further update from EPA as to what came out of the meeting today. Jeff, may I ask, uh, this communication, uh, this type of communication, are we continuing to seek the translation of it, uh, for lack of a better word, or interpretation of it uh, w from GeoInsight? Our, our yes. They, so they're privy to this and, and offer insight as is appropriate? Yes. Okay, I appreciate that. Jeff, I, I just want to, I mean, I want to say that I, I read this, and this is really insulting from Olin to, to talk about the DAPL and not to take care of that. I mean, I'm not an expert at it, but EPA wants them to handle it, and they have the, the gall to, to not want to do that. Uh, I, I would think that the EPA would be the, the, uh, the voice to have them do that. I mean, on page three, for them to say that because uh, the town is being provided private water and and the residents in certain areas are getting bottled water, then they don't have to, to research the DAPL. That, that just is so insulting to, to the residents of this community. Yeah, I, you know, is, is this being passed also to our um, congressional legislators and so that they can still keep a, a handle on it? I know that we've had meetings with them in the past. Right. Uh, you know, I, I know we're waiting for more information. I, I'm sure that you haven't heard from EPA today no, no. as to the results of the meeting. But I just, I read through this and it's just appalling that uh, Olin is, is taking this approach. Yeah, just, I, I, I would agree. I mean, there's no question uh, that, and that is particularly, um, uh, I think, um, insulting, I guess, to suggest that uh, because Olin is, has agreed to provide bottled water to uh, the folks on uh, Cook Ave, that that somehow mitigates the need for um, solutions to be looked at sooner rather than later. Um, I, I think the, uh, as I understand it, in terms of the legal agreement, and I, I do not have a copy of the uh, agreement between EPA and Olin, but, uh, you know, I, and I don't want to speak for Olin, but the sense I have is they're uh, trying to 
uh, in, strongly encourage Olin to, uh, to move in this direction uh, without getting into outright litigation, whether it may come to that in the end is a, another question, but. I agree with Slip and Kyer, been on the board for a while. You can't trust Olin. I mean, I'm just, you just come, we're just coming to the conclusion right now. You can't trust Olin at all. The bottom line is they pay $3 million to the town, they got off cheap, and that's it. And that's what you're referring to. You can't trust them at all. They're challenging EPA, you know, and bottom line is you cannot trust Olin one bit. You can't. You got to fight them vigorously because they're going to come back and they're going to say they're wrong, they're going to tie it up, they're going to hire a consultant firm out of New Hampshire, they do water tests, they're going to get this result, that result. You can't trust them at all. I've been saying it for years. They got off cheap, three million bucks. You can't trust Olin. And that's our fault. Mr. Chair, I don't mind. If I may, uh, to the manager, is it, would it be appropriate, I agree with my colleagues' comments, thank you, Mr. Carver, for bringing that up. Uh, would it be appropriate for us to respond as a board to this letter with our disgust? I mean, later on, Mr. Kyra points out an excellent point, but later on it says, they don't believe this poses a risk to the independent groundwater at the site. Well, I couldn't disagree with that more. Yeah. Crazy. I would ask the people that are drinking bottled water if they think it cause, uh, they're at risk, their water's at risk. I believe it is. So would it be appropriate for us to respond to this, some type of a form of a letter through the, I mean, just out of pure disgust? And they want to write absolute trash, well, you should be able to respond. I, you know, I think it certainly would be appropriate to respond. I guess the, uh, I'm not necessarily sure that um, we have a, uh, a forum to respond or whether, you know, the, um, uh, a letter. Address, right? I'm sorry? We have their mail and address? Well, yeah, I mean, there's no, yeah, we, we can certainly send a letter. I guess the, qu the question that I'm not clear on is whether uh, at the end of the day uh, what impact it will have, but there's the certainly, I guess there's no harm in um, expressing uh, the town's um, uh, frustration or objection to uh, the tone of the letter. Well, I, I think we should, um, you know, just everything we can do to oppose this, whether it's letter after letter, We'll spend the money on the paper, as far as I'm concerned. And I agree with uh, Selectman Bendel. Should the letter go actually to EPA rather than Olin? Obviously, Olin is going to take the letter and just put it in a circular file. Right. Uh, but we want to make sure that uh, going to the EPA, that you know what they're providing us is is not reality. Um, so I, you know. Yeah, I, I think the letter should be uh, directed to. Uh, EPA and probably copied to uh, Olin. Yeah. And our delegation as well? Yes. You know, we have a pretty open line of communication with Mr. DiLorenzo. Um, and I don't want to give him a pass at all here, uh, but I, I have gotten the sense in meetings when he has been present or e even a presenter um, that <coughs> as a federal agency, the EPA ties his hands quite a bit um, with regards to the actions that he has the, or that the EPA can take. Um, so uh, I certainly, I, if they had a meeting today, I'd love to hear the results of that meeting um, as, you know, in, in, sooner than later. Um, and, and to the extent that uh, the, this body here wants to uh, pen a letter, really just voicing our, um, our opposition or our, our disappointment, and maybe that's not a strong enough word, with the uh, the assertions that Olin are making in this in this presentation, uh, you know I don't. What I don't want to see happen is Mr. De Lorenzo get the sense that this is another memo that comes across our desk and doesn't get um, the attention that it ultimately that it deserves. So, um, some some type of prudent, quick action that um, you know is it time for Mr. De Lorenzo to be before us um, rather than in in memo form, maybe in personal form to. Give us a sense of where we are, and so that we can really interact with him on a one-to-one -one basis, uh, rather than doing it through paper. It's just a thought. I agree with you. I'd, I'd love to have him invite him in, and I'd like to invite the residents to, who live in that area to be here too, so they can hear their concerns. And I know it's not always thrilling to sit at a selectman meeting, but certainly uh, well, they're more than welcome, as far as I'm concerned. We do have periodic uh, open forum, um, and I'm not sure when the next one is scheduled for. Um, so. 
uh, most assuredly, if, uh, if Mr. DiLorenzo or an EPA representative was going to be here, we'd certainly want to publicize that to, to the community and anyone that wants to have their voice heard could come. But I'm sorry, uh, Jeff, yes, I didn't Mr. want to Chairman, step on. I, I did uh, uh, probably a month and a half or two ago in conversation with uh, uh, Mr. DiLorenzo uh, uh, talk about the uh, prospect of having him back out uh, to provide a status. Um, and uh, he was... Uh, at that point, uh, suggesting uh, August or September uh, as a, uh, based upon the work that was being done and the uh, um, timing of uh, different submittals that uh, Olin uh, was required to make, that that would be, uh, at, at that time anyways, uh, from his perspective, uh, a good time to, to come out and uh, speak with the board. Chairman, I hate to get all worked up over this, but I can't help but do it. I mean, I, I think we should even include in the letter, let's copy it to the resident. Anybody who's receiving water at their house, bottled water at their house, should get a copy of this to let them know we're, we're with you on this. We're totally opposed, and we're doing everything we can, even if it's in the form of a small letter. And we're just not going to let something like this stand. Mr. Kyra pointed out a great line. We're just not going to let, we're not going to stand for this as a community. We're not together here again until May 8th, if I'm doing, I've looked at the calendar correctly. Um, do you gentlemen wish to see the copy of this letter before it goes out and sort of, I don't know, or, or I mean, how do you want to proceed? Do you, do you want to just entrust that Jeff is getting the tenor and the tone of what we, what, what you hope to have it say? I believe so. I think it'd be a lot more polite than I would be. <laughs> <laughs> My, Mr. McCoy. Yeah, yeah, thank you. No, I trust uh, Jeff's uh, wisdom. When you're talking about bottled water, they promised the residents of Cook Street that they were going to pay bottled water. I heard from a resident they stopped that. So it would be nice to find out if that has happened first before anything. You know, so uh, I hope that's what I was told by a resident they have stopped that. And uh, that's, that would be news to me. I will check I that heard out. that. I don't know. I'm just now you're talking about bottled water. So, you know, I would hope to think that's not the case, but I'm just passing on that a resident said they've uh, stopped that. So it's satisfactory then if Jeff uh, pens a letter over the course of the next few days and you'll send a copy of it in our next packet then? Yes. Thank you, sir. All right, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, next is uh, just a correspondence from uh, Rick Hill from uh, Little League. Uh, just read this into the record. On behalf of the Wilmington Little League Board of Directors, uh, would like you, would uh, you please express our thanks to town manager and Wilmington Board of Selectmen for participating in our opening day parade and ceremonies at Town Park. Uh, we really appreciate each of them for their support, not only for the event, but for giving us a year-round support to allow us an opportunity to be the best we can be for the baseball and softball players of Wilmington. Uh, next is a memo from me to the board just uh, uh, presenting you with the appointments that you uh, will be slated to make at your meeting on uh, May 8th. And I'll just go through the list here. Uh, we have uh, the animal control officer for one year term, uh, Christopher Sullivan, uh, Board of Appeals, uh, five year term, uh, Thomas Syracuse. While I'm on that, I would just note uh, uh, with the election of uh, Mr. Loud to the board, uh, he did uh, provide me with a a letter uh, resigning from the Board of Appeals. So there will be a vacancy on the Board of Appeals. And uh, my suggestion is that um, uh, the board uh, uh, consider a process for the replacement. Uh, what what uh, I would suggest is uh, a posting uh, of the opening on the town's website, which you may recall we did the last time we had a vacancy. Uh, we can do that uh, immediately tomorrow. Uh, and then considering, consider holding uh, interviews, as again was done in the previous instance, uh, consider that um, uh, the week of uh, May 24th, perhaps have a deadline for May, the week of uh, uh, May 19th for people to get their letters of interest uh, into the office, uh, schedule interviews the week of the 24th, uh, and then you could either, uh, the board could either make their decision uh, at the conclusion of that meeting or perhaps on the meeting of uh, June 12th. Um, I would note that the Board of Appeals meets again on June 14th. Uh, so there is, I think there is some measure of timeliness here so that um, 
uh, matters before the Board of Appeals uh, are not uh, disrupted. Thank Mr. you. Chairman, if I could just say a couple things. The, the Board of Appeals does have um, a very large case that was continued till the June 14th, so I think it's pretty important that we get five full members for that case to be heard on June 14th. But the other thing with four members, it um, the applicants have a choice to either continue to go on with their case that night because they need all four members to approve whatever's in front of them, or if they don't get that, they won't get whatever they're asking for. So it's important that the Board of Appeals uh, lives on with four members as little time as possible. So if we could possibly do what Jeff suggested and maybe appoint someone on, on the 24th, that would be uh, better for the Board of Appeals. And also, uh, Tom Zaragoza is a great asset to the Board of Appeals, and I strongly recommend him um, for the Board of Appeals. Does that sound, that plan sound acceptable to everybody, uh, posting that post haste? So you can get that on there um, as soon as tomorrow, potentially, Jeff? And yes. By virtue of us having this meeting this evening and it being broadcast, uh, any folks from throughout the community that might be inclined or interested in volunteerism for the town, Zoning Board of Appeals, uh, please consider submitting. Uh, it will be, it'll be an application available, or uh, how do uh, they there, go there is, uh, it, people can just simply send a, uh, either an email or a letter just uh, expressing their interest in any background they feel would be relevant. Very well, thank you. And our press is present here, so we appreciate your getting that word out as well. And so if, if the board is inclined to adopt this schedule and, and for example, establish a deadline for letters of interest uh, to be Friday, the, 19th of May, that gives uh, folks um, uh, about uh, a month, uh, a little less than a month to respond. And then uh, you have a meeting on, on May 22nd. Uh, I would suggest it would probably not uh, be advisable to, to conduct these interviews on the 22nd, but perhaps uh, Wednesday the 24th. Um, depending upon the number of uh, applicants that come in, uh, we could set up interviews uh, that evening and structure it. I think the last time uh, they were in half hour intervals. Yes, yes, very well. So the 24th? Yeah. We'll schedule it. Uh, moving on in terms of uh, other appointments, uh, Board of Registrars, a three year term to expire 2020, Edward Sousa. Uh, Council for the Arts, uh, two-year term to expire 2020, uh, uh, Sarah Brook, uh, Jean Chang, Marguerite Alaya, Diane uh, Jim, uh, Gian Berdano, and Linda Malloy. And then fence viewers, uh, one-year terms, Paul Laluni and John Spaulding. Scholarship uh, Fund Committee, uh, Paul Ruggiero uh, as interim superintendent, Susan Clarkin, Carol King, Robert Peterson, uh, Michelle Kyra Norton, uh, town accountant, uh, Michael Morris, and then for town council, one year term, uh, Deutsch Williams, Brooks, Dorensis, and Holland. Uh, under the constables, uh, these are one year terms, uh, Barbara Kala, Jason Costa, Alan Hunter, Frank Ingram, uh, John Bridges, Jr., Paul Bruce, Jr., uh, Ronald DiGregorio, uh, Dennis Otis, William Pepicelli, uh, John Rowan, and Anthony Saya. Also, also uh, Christopher Sullivan, only in conjunction with his duties as a, an animal control officer. Uh, then next, these are, uh, there's a separate memo uh, for me to the board uh, identifying uh, positions uh, that I am uh, looking to make appointments or reappointments to with the uh, approval of the Board of Selectmen, and this would be uh, Commission on Disabilities, Phyllis uh, DiGenetti, uh, and then uh, also continuing on the Commission on Disabilities, uh, there's a vacancy. Uh, this, uh, per the law, uh, the individual that would be qualified to fill this vacancy would be an individual uh, who has a handicap, uh, another uh, term to expire, 2018. Uh, again, another vacancy person would need to have a handicap. Uh, and then a 
third vacancy uh, would be a family member of an individual. Uh, and then under historical commission, uh, three-year term to expire 2020, uh, Gerald Duggan, Robert M uh, Millett, and then there's a vacancy, a uh, recent vacancy that uh, on that committee. So we have, uh, we'll be posting that as well. Permanent building committee, uh, three-year term to expire 2020, uh, George Hooper and John Holloway. So if I may, just at this moment, uh, you know, again, I want to impress upon uh, folks that might be listening to, if it's not you, maybe it's someone you know, uh, share with your neighbors. We're, you're, we have vacancies on the Commission on uh, Disabilities and vacancies on the Historical Commission. Uh, so if you or someone you know uh, you think would be uh, a good fit for any of those roles, please reach out to the Tom Anager's office uh, as soon as possible um, and put your skills and, and expertise to work for the, for the benefit of the town. Thank you. Uh, then next we have uh, correspondence from uh, individuals that are seeking reappointment uh, uh, to be constables, the first being Paul Bruce, Jr. Uh, he uh, writes, I would like to personally thank your office along with the Board of Selectmen for allowing me to serve as a constable for the town of Wilmington, formally requesting that the Board of Selectmen renew my constable license for the, uh, 2001, or, uh, for the 2018 year, I think he means. Um, I. Uh, thank you in advance for your time and consideration. Uh, Ronald DiGregorio uh, notes, uh, Dear Board of Selectmen, please reappoint me as a constable to the Wil to, uh, for Wilmington. Uh, uh, I have been a constable in Wilmington since 1992 and would appreciate your approval of the reappointment. I retired as a Superior Court Officer for the Middlesex Superior Court for 28, after 28 years. I'm also a Vietnam a veteran serving in the United States Air Force uh, from May 1, 1961 until April 30, 1967, and was honorably discharged April 30, 1967. I still live at uh, 11 Marriott Road uh, and have, 44, uh, have been there for 44 years. I will abide by your request uh, not to solicit clients in Wilmington, but have authority to serve civil process for my clients. I'm still a constable for Woburn, Medford, and Cambridge, as well as Wilmington, and have an active bond for each city and town. Uh, my bond is good until August 2019 for Wilmington, at which time it will be renewed, and I will uh, send it to the clerk's office to be filed. I've also completed a training program on conflict of interest law. Thank you for your consideration on this reappointment. Uh, this uh, next one is uh, John Rowan. Uh, he indicates uh, I request a renewal of my constable appointment. I've been a constable for many years in Wilmington with no complaints. Uh, I have filed and paid any <coughs> fees required of me. Please contact me if you have any questions or concerns. Uh, next is a, a letter from, uh, this is a letter from me to uh, John Gogan. Uh, this is uh, uh, an annual letter that goes out to um, a representative from either the Democratic or Republican Party, in this case, uh, the Republican uh, Party, just noting that the uh, individual Edward Souza, uh, his term uh, expires as of April 30th on the Board of Registrars, and it references the general law that uh, is applicable, and he is requested to provide uh, the name or names of individuals uh, to be uh, brought forward for consideration. Have you not heard back from him? I have not, and that's does not seem unusual. Ah, okay. Uh, we have a few, uh, a couple of board con to, to consider items, uh, and I'll let you highlight the first one here from Deborah Potter. Uh, yes, uh, Ms. Potter uh, has had a, an auctioneer's license for a number of years now, um, and uh, this, um, uh, for whatever reason, the uh, license was not uh, renewed, it expired in November. Uh, so now she is uh, seeking, uh, it, it isn't a renewal, it's actually a, um, an application for uh, an auctioneer's license. She uh, currently operates uh, at uh, 355 Middlesex Ave, which is the building over by the registry. Mm -hmm. uh, the recommendations, uh, recommendation from the uh, Chief of Police, upon review, the Wilmington Police Department recommends approval of Deborah A. Potter's application 
for an annual auctioneer's license uh, doing business as Boston Auctions and Antique, LLC. Uh, Deborah A. Potter, Corporate Officer, 355 Middlesex Ave, uh, Suite 11. Uh, she did provide uh, a couple of references here from uh, other auctioneers who um, uh, apparently know her as uh, to be a reputable individual. Thank you. I don't believe I see Ms. Potter here, um, so I will go to the board if there's any questions or concerns or a motion. Do we need recommendations from anybody? Um, uh, just, uh, well, so the, the uh, police chief did uh, recommend, uh, based upon their review of her application, uh, recommends approval. Thank you. So she did not have this since November? Was yes. she still operating from November until now? Uh, no, oh, not okay. that we know of. I mean, we did um, contact, uh, actually Beverly uh, uh, contacted her and made her aware that uh, she was not able to operate uh, uh, as an auctioneer uh, during that interim period. And to our knowledge, she did not. Any other questions? Uh, anyone want to make a motion to approve Deborah Potter's uh, auctioneer license? I make a motion to approve as described by the town manager. Second, Mr. McCoy's motion. We have a motion made and second. Any further discussion? I see none. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. We wish Ms. Potter well. <coughs> uh, next under uh, board to consider is uh, a request from uh, Teresa Castellano to conduct a, a 5K road race uh, in Wilmington, this would be uh, the third annual. I'll just uh, note, she writes to the board uh, on April 5th, please accept this letter as a formal request to have the third annual Tony A 5K. We'd like to use the same route that was used last year and we'll contact the police department as soon as uh, we're granted uh, permission by the board of selectmen uh, and the date assigned. And she offers, um, uh, several dates here uh, as possible dates, uh, September 30th, October 1st, October 14th, uh, or October 15th. Uh, my recommendation would be uh, October 14th. Uh, we've checked with the school department. There's no conflicts there uh, and uh, should not be a problem. Very well. I know that this is an event uh, that they've run, I, I, this is the third, so we know that we've, they've done it in the past and uh, with success both from a fundraising perspective but also uh, for the community. So um, um, I'm in, in favor of it personally. Uh, any questions uh, from members here? Mr. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry, I didn't uh, reference a time which wasn't in the letter, but uh, it, it would be, uh, at least in the past, it's been nine o'clock, so I would anticipate a 9 a.m. Uh, start time. Chairman, having attended this in the past, I would move that we grant this request. Second. A motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Unanimous. Thank you. We wish them well. Public comments. Anybody wish to have their voice heard? Mr. McDonald, good evening. Good evening. Thank you for this opportunity to speak. Um, first, I'd like to begin by um, congratulating Mr. McCoy and Mr. Loud on their victory, and I wish you great success uh, on the board, and um, I'll pray for you that your contributions um, make the town a better place to, to live in. And I uh, also wanted to thank the voters um, who took the time to come out and vote. And um, uh, whether you win or whether you lose an election, it's important to remember that the, um, the people of Wilmington really need to win. And um, so I wish you guys well. Um, I do have a few comments uh, tonight uh, that I'd like to share with, uh, with the board. Um, listening to um, the meeting tonight uh, and trying to do a little brainstorming on how I might be able to contribute some ideas to the board, um, I'd like to s set forth some ideas. Um, you spoke 
uh, pretty extensively about the drug issue. And um, I like to think about things from a business-minded point of view uh, in terms of economics. Um, with regard to the, um, the addressing of uh, the drug issue, um, I'd like to point out that we've had a DARE officer in the past, a drug abuse resistance education officer who was part of the police department. Um, I'm just kind of a little bit concerned that um, we're spending this additional money when we should be hiring police officers um, that are actually trained, certified, and able to do something in addition to just writing a traffic ticket, such as um, uh, dealing with this drug issue. And I think that that would save the town a lot of money. Um, and to address um, the hours that the, the uh, individual would work, uh, you might think about hiring somebody that um, was able to work from noontime to say 8.30 p.m. That way he could address issues in the school and issues at home. And I think that might um, be something to think about. Um, the other concern that I had was um, listening to you guys talk about the Olin uh, issue. Um, I'd like to just ask a question before I make my comments because Mr. McCoy um, got me a little bit concerned. And I've heard some chatter in the past that there was some type of secret agreement, settlement agreement with Olin that let them off the hook. And I was told that the agreement was a tolling agreement just for water. In, uh, in other words, Olin was gonna pay to bring the water main from Woburn and connect us to the MWRA at their cost. So can somebody enlighten me if there's some type of agreement with Olin, such as a settlement that left them off the hook for liability? Because I was told that there was still uh, an open avenue for them to be held liable um, for the issues that occurred on that site. Yeah, I mean, I, I'll say what I think I know, and I'll certainly ask anyone to, uh, that has more experience than Jeff, that's probably you. Um, I don't think Olin is not off the hook, um, I, I, and I don't want to speak for Mr. McCoy. They certainly, um, uh, well, I, again, I'll let Mr. McCoy speak for Mr. McCoy, but they're still very much on the hook. So EPA is holding Olin accountable for what took place there, and Olin will, when we ever get to a point when we're cleaning that place up, Olin's going to, to be footing that bill. So they're still very much involved, and that's really, I think, part of the challenge of this process is that EPA is working with Olin, and they're not seeing eye to eye on what that process ought to be going forward. But Olin is still very much in the game, and Olin will still very much be a part of the cleanup process. Is that a reasonable... Yes, it's, uh, I mean, Olin is on the hook uh, for the cleanup, uh, certainly with uh, EPA. The town uh, has not signed any kind of an agreement that lets them off the hook. Okay, so um, I appreciate that, Mr. Hull. Um, I'm just a little bit concerned that the board isn't be, being a little more aggressive on this uh, knowing that people have died of cancer in town and knowing that our wells were shut down and the specific compound that was a carcinogen that was found in our wells um, migrated from the Olin site. So it's a little perplexing for me to see the board not putting forth a motion to have our attorneys um, take some type of legal action against Olin. Um, to be perfectly honest with you, I, I mentioned at a prior meeting, uh, manslaughter charges. If somebody um, is on record as saying that individuals from that company dumped chemicals into a lagoon, and that's, that's clearly documented, I, I don't know why the town can't be proactive and represent the residents and, and say, look it, we're not gonna play games with you anymore, Owen. We're not gonna play games with the EPA, which is really a revolving door for industry individuals to go from industry to government to protect the, indus protect the um, industry from uh, any type of liability. Just like the FDA, 
as pharmaceutical people that go from the pharmaceutical industries to the FDA, and I think it's about time that we just say, hey, um, the line's been crossed. You want to play games with us? You want to say that you don't think that there's any type of threat or migration of the DAPL? Well, this is what we're doing. We got $18 million in the bank. That's free cash. We have a numerous amount of residents that have died of cancer. We have a town clerk that documents death certificates and causes of death. Why don't we do something proactive and be really aggressive? Olin is a not a multi-million dollar company. It's a multi-billion dollar company. It's massive. Their assets are astronomical. I'm going to just take it from here. Thank you, Mr. McDonald. Um, I, I want to just cover one bullet point uh, in, your, in your presentation there, and that is it is my feeling that as long as I've been on this board, um, that this board and uh, the, the paid employees of the town have been taking this issue very seriously and uh, acting as aggressively as is appropriate and feasible to be able to act in a way that keeps Olin on the table uh, and, and accountable and uh, in, in, in the project. And ultimately, by virtue of having EPA involved, the EPA is really running this project and will get us to a point where we can clean up the site. Um, the charges that you're suggesting uh, that we uh, go out and hire an attorney to file charges of, of homicide or whatever, uh, I can assure you only of this one thing, that this board consults with our town attorney ongoing, um, and uh, we, uh, we, none of us are experts in uh, the, uh, this type of technology and, and water and how water moves in an, in an aquifer, et cetera. Um, but we consult with the experts and seek the advice of experts, whether they be uh, experts in the field of, uh, you know, a water flow uh, or chemicals, or in this case, uh, attorneys. And uh, so uh, we have collectively as a board uh, always acted um, as aggressively as, ha as has been deemed appropriate, given the circumstances and given the advice from counsel. So that's my position and how I feel um, comfortable in, the, in, the, in what I have voted for uh, all the years that I've been on this board and comfortable with the direction that we continue to take. It moves slowly and it frustrates me and I sense that it frustrates many other people, but it's moving. Uh, and we are going to see in our lifetime a time when that DAPL and other nasty uh, chemicals at that site will be coming out of the ground. And we need to stay the course and stay aggressive as, we, as I pledge to do uh, to get us to that point. I ask Mr. Hull to please compliment any more uh, any, any Yeah, I, I would message. just make a couple of points. W one, um, you know, throwing out the idea that, that there's, uh, that people in Wilmington or that all people in Wilmington that have had cancer are uh, somehow connected to um, the Olin uh, contamination. Uh, th there's never been any facts to that uh, that statement. Uh, certainly, the Massachusetts the Department of Public Health uh, has had commissioned a study that unfortunately has had fits and starts over the years because of funding or other circumstances, but that study has never been concluded to my knowledge, and there has never, again to my knowledge, been any information whatsoever that has identified particular individuals who have uh, had cancer or died of cancer uh, to the uh, Olin plume. So to suggest that, uh, I guess, or infer that the Board of Selectmen and myself and others are heartless in allowing people to die of cancer just doesn't, doesn't fly. Um, the fact of the matter is that these type of projects, uh, like hundreds and thousands across the country, are Superfund sites, uh, and there is a process that communities have to go through uh, in order to get them resolved. Uh, EPA uh, is, is the agency that is tasked with moving that process forward. Uh, I, I, I'm not aware of any Superfund sites that have been, uh, you know, with, particularly uh, with sites with this level of complexity that have been uh, resolved in a matter of 10 or 15 or 20 or even 30 years. These are unfortunately, um, 
you know, long-term issues. Uh, I'm not making excuses, but that's just the reality of what we're dealing with. I think the board, and I certainly can speak for myself in saying we've been attentive and focused on holding Olin's feet to the fire, but we have to work within the legal constraints of the system and suggesting or filing a claim of manslaughter, I think would be uh, quite frankly a waste of town money. Well, I appreciate your comments. Um, um, they're duly noted. Um, I think it might be prudent for the town to um, implement a program where uh, they notify the residents of the situation and a, and a resident that has uh, been uh, diagnosed with cancer um, can be proactive to see if there's any types of those carcinogens um, that are found in their, in their system of their body. Um, so for you to say that, Mr. Hull, I've never said that you were heartless concerning that measure, so uh, I don't know where you got that from. Um, but I am a little disappointed that uh, the town officials aren't doing something that's going to scare the crap out of Olin. And uh, I think um, if you got proactive and you started saying, you know, we want to notify people that carcinogens have been found. We want you to notify your physicians. We want to notify your laboratories so that if there's some type of compound that's a cancer-causing compound that came from the Olin site, it can be documented. So uh, we would have the evidence to bring forth some type of claim like this, and Olin would quit play playing us for fools. Uh, so um, I don't know how that would be done. We have 23,000 people in this town. We have a lot of people that are much more brilliant than I am much more brilliant than this board is, that we could ask for their input and see what type of um, solutions that they have to offer for. We, I'm sure we can come up with some great ideas if we put it forth to the community, but to just sit there and just say, oh, you know, it's a slow process, the EPA moves like a snail. You know what? That doesn't fly, Mr. Hall, when people are dying left and right of cancer and Wilmington is designated as a high cancer rate town. So. Um, that's enough on that issue. Um, the other concern that I have is, um, Mr. Shampoo, congratulations on being appointed chairman again. Thank you. Uh, it's my understanding that the chairman sets the agenda, and um, a lot of nice things come before the board. I'm not, I'm not belittling that, but there are a lot of things that don't come before the board, and when I drive through town and I see the massive amounts of potholes and I never see that on the agenda, I just put my hands up and say, can you please do something about some of these problems that are solutions? I went down Waltham Street today by WCTV. It, it looks like Iraq, it looks like craters. I mean, you can't, you can't drive down that road without all four tires hitting potholes all the way down there. And I just can't for the life of me. That's, gone, that's not gone on for months. That's gone on for years. And I go I down Balladvale Street. You know, the, the, the fact of the matter is that Waltham Street is an unaccepted street, which is, uh, there are a number of streets in town that are unaccepted and the town uh, is not uh, responsible. In fact, we're, we're not supposed to be spending public funds on ways that are not accepted as public ways. So the town uh, has periodically uh, put uh, assisted, uh, for example, in, in prior to the start of the um, half marathon, which starts from that location, uh, have put in some temporary patch to try to smooth things over. Again, uh, the town is not uh, responsible for maintaining private ways, but has made an exception in that instance, but uh, the, it, it, they're simply not public ways. Um, I actually suspected that you would say that, Mr. Hull, um, but I'm pretty sure that you'd be more than willing every year to take that industrial and that commercial tax money from those people that are paying, what, $32 per thousand on their taxes? And I don't know why you can't bring those people in and say, let's do something about this. This is really a disgrace. Concerning Main Street, I think Main Street's probably an accepted road. I think Balladvale's probably an accepted road, and I think there's numerous ex uh, 
roads around town that are accepted. And I bet you if I check that book that I'm going to see the DPW guy being put in for a pay raise this year, right? And so I'm going to ask the board to reject that pay raise and take that money and start fixing the potholes that he should be fixing. And the last issue that I wanted to bring up, okay, is that I've spent quite a bit of time down at Deming Way. And to spend time with those senior citizens, you get to learn a lot. And one of the most disgusting things that I've witnessed down there is the amount of vacant units. I'm not going to get into um, in too much the prior meeting where I had to leave, but a paid town individual slammed me, slandered me, and right before an election uh, tried to belittle me, calling me a coward or anything like that. When numerous meetings, when he was at the meetings, I stood up to him, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna say what I, I, I'm gonna have to say tonight, that he came down at that meeting with veterans. He had his team of veterans trying to look like a big hero, Be okay? Careful, Kevin, okay? Let me tell you something. Those veterans, okay, those veterans help homeless people. And for me to go down to Deming Way and see many, many vacant units and to hear him say what he said and to be with a group of guys that help homeless people and to see homeless people and to witness vacant units is disgusting. And I pulled out, I pulled out the um, agenda for the town meeting and he's getting a $6,600 $6, raise this year and we have vacant units and homeless veterans. And you guys listened to that crap. The paper printed that crap the week before the election. And so I would like you guys to stand up at town meeting and say, no, Mr. Samaglia, you're not getting a pay raise. Why don't you take a little break from going to your luncheons at the senior center and take a little drive down to Deming Way and take a look at the vacant units and then maybe go to a homeless veterans shelter and maybe do your job and put veterans in those units because they're supposed to get first dibs in those units. Thank you, Mr. McDonald. And that's about all I have to say tonight. Uh, you've, Thank I, you very much. You've been heard. I appreciate uh, the, your, uh, your comments. Uh, and everything is taken under advisement except for the last part. Um, I can assure you uh, well, that... Down Mr. McDonald, Mr. McDonald, you're no longer recognized here. Please, sir, don't, don't do it. You started off great, okay? And you ended off on a sour note again. So I don't mind. Every, every meeting, if you want to uh, open up conversation, excuse me, if you want to open up conversation and deliver your thoughts in a respectful tone, in a way that we can converse like grown-ups, you're welcome at that microphone. When you start yelling into that microphone and besmirching the character of someone that is... is beyond reproach in this community as well as in this commonwealth, then, then you're off base. You just have nothing to stand on, sir, and I won't let you do it. So you're, you're done, sir. You're done, sir. I, I, that's where I take issue with everything, everything else you said. You were, you, you were entitled to say, and we heard you, and I, and I know that we have notes that were taken from some of your commentary, but I can tell you, sir, that I will defend Mr. Samaglia and his department until my dying day, and that is how I'll end this conversation. You, you, you're, you're not recognized. Um, so thank you. Uh, that was the. Uh, is there any other public comments? I see none. So uh, new business or items that uh, not reasonably anticipated by the chairman. Uh, Forty-eight hours in advance of the meeting. And uh, Mr. Bendel, I'll start with you if that's okay, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just uh, have a few things, if I may. I'd just like to start by uh, congratulating my colleagues, Mr. McCoy, on his re-election. Uh, Mr. Loud, congratulations to you. And uh, to our new chair, congratulations. And to all three of you, I look forward to working with you along with Mr. Kyra and hopefully what will be a positive and productive year. Uh, <clears throat> I want to uh, thank all the people who participated in the election, those who voted, and then all the, also those who were brave enough to put themselves um, onto the ballot, and I applaud them. So I congratulate all who participated in the election this past Saturday. Um, I'd like to congratulate uh, and thank the folks from the WOW organization for putting on another fantastic 5K road race this past weekend. Um, I want to particularly point out uh, the efforts of Joe Martinello and the race committee, uh, along with Lou, who did an outstanding job. I think they set a record for a number of uh, participants in the race. 
I can assure you when the results come out in the town crier that I myself did not set any records this past weekend, but uh, I, uh, we very much enjoyed it. It was a great time. Um, I'd like to uh, just plug two events that are coming up. I'd like to encourage all residents to participate in next Saturday's town uh, meeting, annual town meeting beginning at 1030 at the high school. I hope everyone will come out and participate in the process. And then also I look forward to, it's a few weeks away, but May 13th is the grand opening of the Yentel uh, uh, Park, the grand opening. And also worth pointing out that the new signage is on the way um, that will be going up shortly. But we're really looking forward to the grand opening on the 13th. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bradley. Mr. Kerr? Yeah, I, I too would like to uh, congratulate uh, Mr. Loud, Mr. McCoy on their election and, uh, and to you, Chairman. Uh, I look forward to working with everybody on the board uh, for a productive, uh, productive year. Uh, I didn't uh, make the WOW um, road race. I heard it was uh, well attended. It was a, an exciting uh, day out there. But I did attend the, the Little League uh, grand opening as, as well as everybody here, the parade, and uh, it was an outstanding day as well. Uh, kicking off the Little League Parade and, and uh, that uh, the kids just looked great out there and, and uh, it was an exciting day for them. Um, just a couple of things that I would like to see um, going forward. I, I attended the facilities master plan the other day and was brought up about the Butters Road Bridge um, and a concern in the Butters Road Bridge in regards to uh, access to it for fire apparatus and Right now, it looks like it's a, a pretty uh, difficult bridge to get over, and I didn't know if that was something that we could look into. The, the board seemed to be coming up, and I have uh, received a few phone calls on that. Um, so if, if that can be looked into. Uh, yes, uh, th this has been, a uh, unfortunately, an, uh, an issue that's come up periodically over the years, and we will uh, contact... Uh, um, the uh, mass DOT um, and have them uh, inspected and if necessary take any actions to fortify the uh, bridge. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'll just go in line. I, I, I want to uh, uh, echo my colleagues here in, in congratulating Mr. Loud uh, on your victory and, uh, and you as well, Mr. McCoy. Um, I believe that uh, we have a good group here and can do uh, good work together uh, for the benefit of the people of, of Wilmington. Um, want to encourage, uh, as, as my colleague Greg just said a moment ago, want to encourage people to come out on Saturday. I, I think it's going to be a doggone nice day. Um, but uh, come out and participate in the most uh, natural and, and pure civic process that's still left in our government. Uh, and that's uh, an open town meeting where you get to decide uh, and have your voice heard. Um, and, you know, if, if, uh, if the meeting goes uh, efficiently, uh, it doesn't have to be an all-day affair. Um, I know that uh, our town moderator um, does a very good job and, and uh, keeps, keeps the flow going. So please, I, I encourage people to at least come out in the morning and, and participate in that civic process. So uh, that's, that's it. And, and thank you, uh, Mr. Bendel, for talking about the, the Yentile Farm Park that will be opening on the 13th. Please mark your calendar for that. Uh, we certainly want to see a... Uh, a wide and uh, uh, large population uh, of, of people that will come out and help celebrate that, that grand opening. Um, so again, and thank you again for your faith in me for this year. I, I hope to, to serve you as well. Mr. McCoy. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Uh, chairman. I just want to congratulate you with the uh, unanimous support from the Board of Selectmen on your chairmanship. And once again, all the best wishes to you and your family and your son's confirmation. I know it's a big thing when you were a Catholic. Yes. And uh, I want to thank the uh, membership uh, congratulating myself. And I want to congratulate Mr. Loud on his victory. And, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to a good work, work uh, working on behalf of the uh, citizens, especially with the board. And I'd like to take this moment to thank the uh, 1,481 people that voted for me and the folks who didn't vote for me, I want to be your selectman too. And if there's any question at all, feel free to give me a call. I'd love to have a cup of coffee, meet with you, and uh, you know, just hopefully uh, you know, uh, we can work things out. And I just, uh, once again, look forward to working with the board. And once again, Mr. Loud, congratulations, and congratulations, and thank you, everybody. Mr. Loud? I'd like to also thank you, Mr. Mc thank you, and congratulate Mr. McCoy and Mr. Shampoo on your championship. And I certainly look forward to uh, working with everyone on this board um, <clears throat> Saturday was a, 
a learning experience. I've learned every day since Saturday on uh, town government. I look forward to learning every day and working for everyone in town. Um, I need to thank, um, since Mike mentioned his numbers, I'm going to mention my 1,849 people that voted for me. And uh, every vote counts. And um, please get out there next Saturday, the 29th, to enjoy uh, a great day of government. And I need to thank everyone that supported me, especially my wife, Doreen. She didn't deserve what she went through for the last couple of weeks, but we're going to try to get past that and uh, move on. But uh, I really appreciate everyone's help. Thank you. Thank you all. Jeff, uh, important dates, please. Yes, uh, April 26th is a brush drop off Old Main Street, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, once again on the 29th, uh, brush drop off Old Main Street, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. As was noted, April 29th, annual town meeting, high school auditorium starts at 10.30 a.m. Uh, April 29th is a back uh, drug take back uh, drop off at the public safety building, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, May 1st through the 5th is curbside collection of yard waste. Uh, May 3rd, brush drop off Old Main Street, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, May 6th, brush drop off Old Main Street, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, next meeting of the Board of Selectmen is May 8th, uh, Town Hall, Room 9, 7 p.m. Uh, May 12th is the Good Guy Dinner. Uh, May 13th is the uh, Yentile Farm Recreation Facility Open House, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., uh, ribbon cutting at 10 a.m. Uh, May 20th is the Household Hazardous Waste Day, West Intermediate School parking lot, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, May 21st is the Pan Mass Challenge Kids Bike Ride, uh, Carter Lane, 8 a.m. to noon. Uh, May 22nd is, uh, again, another Board of Selectmen's meeting, Town Hall, Room 9, 7 p.m. And, um, Mr. Chair, unless there's other business, uh, I would suggest that the Board uh, uh, entertain a motion to re-enter executive session for the purpose of discussing collective bargaining strategy with respect to the New England Police Benevolent Association Local 1 in accordance with Massachusetts General Law uh, 30A Section 21 uh, Subsection A uh, Subsection 3 because discussion of uh, the subject in open session may be detrimental uh, to the town's position in the matter and then further uh, for the purpose of discussing strategy with respect to pending litigation uh, with respect to the New England Police Benevolent Association Local 13 uh, town of, uh, versus Town of Wilmington case 01-00050-6563 in accordance with Massachusetts General Law Chapter 30A Section 21A Subsection 3 because discussion of this subject in open session may have a detrimental impact on the town's uh, position in the matter. Upon completion of the executive session, the board uh, would adjourn the meeting and not re-enter open session. I would uh, accept a motion to that effect. <laughs> so moved as described. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Yes, unanimous. Thank you and good night. <laughs>